Hey everyone, I'm Eric Sanders from the Center for Election Science here in New York City, and I'm honored to be joined by our Executive Director, Aaron Hamlin, in lovely Washington, D.C. How you doing, Aaron? Doing great, Eric. All right, so we're very fortunate to have the opportunity to talk about a very, very cool um, sort of uh, Voting Theory 101 topic um, that maybe doesn't get enough airplay, and the, the idea is uh, vote splitting. So what do we mean when we say that um, X and Y candidates split the votes or that vote splitting occurred in an election? Sure, sure. Uh, vote splitting is a phenomenon that is pretty inherent to our vote for one method plurality. So when there are a number of candidates that are similar in their platform, uh, you under our current voting method, you can't support all these candidates at once. And so right. as a consequence, uh, that support for that platform is divided by the number of candidates. Uh, that, that makes sense. That, that actually makes a lot of sense. But it, I mean, is this is this a common phenomenon? Yes. Yeah. It it, it happens uh, in general elections, and uh, it's inevitable in primaries where candidates are more more uh, more likely to be similar. So anytime you have similar candidates that are running and they're running against another candidate or candidates that have another platform, uh, you're going to have votes splitting when you're using plurality. So, I mean, this makes sense to me that it happens, but, you know, let's be honest. Why, why should I care? Why is this a problem? But it, it, it's a problem if you want a particular ideology to have an accurate reflection of support. Okay, so, for example, in a primary where, let's say, there are four candidates running for an office, Three of them are, um, let's say, relatively moderate, sort of on the same page, uh, very similar platforms, and one of them, sort of a more extremist, maybe 25% uh, of the voters love him, the other 75% hate him, uh, or let's say 30%, so the math works out. <laughs> are you saying that um, that candidate, that fourth candidate with only 30% support could actually win that primary? Yeah, I mean, if you have those other three candidates and they have their support divided by three, then it doesn't matter how much support they had uh, initially. I mean, so long it's divided so that that other candidate is able to uh, to get ahead of them. Wow, okay, I think that makes sense. And, and maybe this is a good moment to transition to a related topic, uh, you know, called the spoiler effect. Um, so what... What's the relationship? You know, we hear a lot in elections, someone's called a spoiler or don't be a spoiler, you know, don't run. What does this mean and how is it connected to vote splitting? Uh, a spoiler effect, uh, well, a spoiler refers to a particular, is a term that refers to a particular candidate that changes the outcome of the election. That candidate in themselves won't be able to win, but because of them entering the race, they make it so that the candidate that would have won loses. Okay, and, and of course I'm thinking of the, the famous uh, Ralph Nader Al Gore example where, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious that thousands and thousands of Gore voters, of, I'm sorry, Nader voters would have likely voted for Gore if Nader hadn't been in the race. Is that fair to say? Uh, well, there, there, there's some talk about whether those Nader voters would have voted at all. Fair enough. Uh, but, but, but surely they had, they been out there and been willing to vote. Uh, Nader, Nader's platform has much more similarity with that of Gore than that of, of Bush in that election. Okay. So uh, I, I think I understand. Uh, but, but, I mean, this doesn't have to be a problem. It seems to me that, uh, like in 2004, there was, a, there was a major push for Ralph Nader not to run. So as long as spoilers don't run, then there won't be the spoiler effect. Am I missing something? Well, that, that is a common solution. Uh, that is uh, pushing a candidate not to run. I mean, for instance, in, uh, in, in 2004, on uh, both, both Bill Maher and um, Michael Moore were, were big fans of Nader from, from 2000. But in the 2004, they, they joined a lot of other people in pushing him not to run. Uh, and actually, on Bill Maher's show, both of them literally got down on their knees and begged Nader not to run. What do you think that says? I, I mean, are they misunderstanding something? It seems like uh, that would be sort of the logical, you know, conclusion, which is, look, I like uh, 
Gore better than Bush in this case. Uh, I like Nader a lot too, but I don't want to take votes away from Gore and do anything to allow Bush to win. So it seems like the only solution is to try to coerce Nader not to run. I mean, is there some alternative that, that I'm not thinking of? Their behavior was rational. Um, they before they, they heavily preferred Gore to Bush in that scenario, even though they actually liked Nader more than Gore, but they saw Nader as not being able to win, and so they wanted the, the best outcome. Uh, but pushing people not to run uh, is not the only solution, and it's a good thing because uh, good democracy is about having competition. <laughs> so having an answer that means less competition is likely not a very good answer. Okay, so so let's say we like competition but we still don't want uh, spoilers. What what can we do? What can we support? Well, we have to look at the cause. The, the, the cause is the way that we're expressing ourselves to vote, which is choosing one candidate. And that's, that, that's what's causing us to, to split our votes because we can't choose all the candidates that resemble that that are supporting a particular platform. So if we want to be able to address this, we have to avoid that splitting up. So we need a voting method, uh, such as approval voting, for example, would do it, which would allow you to choose all the candidates that represent a platform that you're interested in. Hmm. That way you're not dividing yourself. Okay, that makes sense, and I'm trying to think of any downside to that. Um... So you're saying that by uh, being able to support multiple candidates who share similar views or a similar platform, um, at the end of a, an election, we're going to have an accurate picture of um, what the voters support for certain um, ideologies or views are, uh, and that we currently don't have an accurate picture of, uh, of the will of the people, so to speak? Okay. The support for, for a particular platform is going to be much more accurate under a voting method that allows you to be more expressive. For one, you're providing more information, and on top of that information being provided, uh, approval voting counts everything. So just to summarize here, you're saying that the cause of vote splitting is our single choice plurality voting method, is that fair to say? Totally fair to say, and like we, we've been looking at this from uh, sort of this being a problem for the left, but this is equally a problem for the right as well. I mean, you have people that support libertarian candidates, and they, they've got the same dilemma in front of them. They say, well, I don't like the Democrat, but uh, I'm going to have to vote for the Republican because my libertarian candidate doesn't show much uh, likelihood of winning, and I don't want to divide that conservative vote. I see. So it's sort of moving towards that, that lesser of two evils calculation that people have to make a lot of the time, huh? Right, right. They they face that on both sides, and I mean even even the middle. I mean you have uh, you can have moderate candidates that are out there, and someone can say, well, I like that moderate candidate, but unfortunately this candidate that's a little bit more to the left or to the right is more likely to win. So I'm going to have to vote right. for that candidate. Right, because they don't want to ostensibly throw their vote away and help the diametrically opposed candidate that they don't like win by voting for a spoiler. Right. 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 Okay, well, I think I think that makes sense. I mean, we've really I think we've clarified the connection between vote splitting and spoilers, and it sounds like there's a simple solution. Amazingly, <laughs> just let people vote for as many candidates as they want, and uh, no more spoilers, no more vote splitting. Exactly. Wow! If only everything was that simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, Aaron, uh, thank you so much uh, for clarifying that topic, and um, it was really nice talking to you. You too, Eric.